Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Asynchronous Apex. So in this one, we are going to talk about Queable Apex. So before we get started, I would uh, want to brief you about the previous two sessions that we already like, you know, have gone through. The first one was on the introduction of Asynchronous Apex. The second one was one of the asynchronous processes that we have in Salesforce, that is uh, future methods, right? So we have already uh, like, you know, we have already gone through like, you know, what is a synchronous process and what are future methods and how we can actually use future methods in order to implement any kind of like, you know, requirement or like you know, any kind of background logic or the other examples that we saw, right? So, um, okay, so let's just first go by the like, you know, definition or like, you know, try to understand that. Uh, like, you know, how much we can actually understand by the definition. And then I will actually uh, move ahead, uh, like, you know, step by step that what it is and what is the syntax and where can we use it and how how can we use it. All right. So. So this is the agenda for the session. Uh, so first we'll go uh, for like, you know, what is queable Apex, then what is the syntax and how we can call the queable Apex and then what are the benefits of queable over future methods. And then we'll also talk about what are the limitations of queable Apex, all right? So the first question is that what is queable Apex, okay? So again, it is also uh, like, you know, just like future method, it is very similar to future methods. Just like future methods, it is also a set of code that runs in the background, all right? So that's one thing and uh again it is a asynchronous process so if you have like you know i can i can brief again about what a asynchronous process is so if you guys remember the example that i have i had taken right so let's say if i have a set of activities let's say i um uh, i have to take a shower i have to get ready uh, I have to take a shower, I have to get ready, then I have to go to a wedding, right? But let's say in all these three tasks that I have, I have something else as well in the middle, right? I also have to go to a laundry shop and drop the clothes, right? So now the first the first task, right? Taking a shower needed my presence. So I have to be available, right? To take a shower, right? So that was task one. The task one was to get ready. So if I have to get ready, then I have to be available. My interaction is required, right? And then there was the third task that was to attend the wedding. Again, my interaction was required. But then the middle task where actually I had to uh, go to the laundry shop and drop the clothes my interaction was not required right so i can actually like you know I, i'll i'll so how how the process will happen right the process will happen starting with the synchronous process and the moment i find something where i feel that my interaction that means user interaction is not required i will push that to the asynchronous process okay so taking a share is fine okay the second step has to be like you know getting ready now the third step was to actually go and drop the clothes to laundry shop right so my interaction was not required so i don't actually have to go to the laundry shop and actually wait for like you know an hour or so like you know how much however like you know how much time it takes for the laundry guy to actually like you know do the whole laundry so i don't have to actually go and stand and like you know wait at the shop to like you know uh, till the laundry is done i can actually drop the clothes and go and attend the wedding come back and then take the clothes right so that is the idea of asynchronous process where you can actually save time and the task can be executed independently and like you know it is not dependent on the other task all right and it will also have its own thread of execution all right so this that was the highlight of asynchronous apex but again i don't want to like you know revise everything so let's just go ahead and get started with queable apex all right so first of all i will uh so don't worry with every step that I'm going to tell you, you will have that question in mind that, okay, if this is the case, then why do we still need queable Apex? We have the future method. We can achieve the same thing with future method, but have some patience. And like, you know, while we progress on this session, I will exactly uh, like, you know, at the right time, I will tell you that why do we actually need queable Apex? All right. So uh, let's just start with the syntax. So if you guys remember in future methods, we define any method with the annotation at the rate future and then we defi define that method as static void right and then that method can only accept primitive uh, data types for example integer boolean but cannot accept non-primitive for example s objects right so those were the kind of like you know those were the checklist for the future method but in queable it is actually not a method but it is a class so if you want to like you know actually implement queable apex then you have to create a class so for example here if you see in the syntax this is a class public class and then you will give some class name right 
and then whatever class you are creating you have to implement this interface queuable okay so it has to it has to come something like this implements queuable now what is interface interface is like you know already it's it's already available in salesforce and this interface already has uh, some methods for example in this case it has only one method which is execute okay so the moment salesforce sees uh, like you know that in any of your class you have implemented this interface implements queuable it will understand that okay so now you are trying to make this class as queuable that means you want to execute the logic inside this in an asynchronous transaction in a separate transaction in a separate thread okay so this is like the identifier for the salesforce right so this is step one that is like you know uh in order to actually implement queuable apex you have to create a class when you create a class you have to implement this interface and this is the syntax that you would be using implements and then queuable okay you cannot put something else here and you cannot put something else here this is how it has to be implements queuable all right so this is step one now step two is there is something about interfaces so this is as i said right this is a standard like you know inbuilt interface so what happens that if there is any interface and whatever methods are available in that interface it's like a list of tasks that 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 method has um uh, just 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 forget about the task just imagine that this is actually an interface which you can actually imagine something like a class which will have all its like you know methods some predefined methods inside that interface now the problem is that the every time not exactly the problem but this is how it works every time you're trying to implement an interface whatever methods are available in that interface you have to implement that method okay so for example in this one i am implementing queuable interface okay so whatever method that are methods that are available in queuable interface i have to implement that method inside this class okay so now the good thing is that queuable method has only sorry queuable interface has only execute method okay and that is the reason that the syntax comes along with the implementation of execute method okay so first step is to include implement queuable so that salesforce can realize that you want to execute this class asynchronously that means you want to execute this class in a separate thread in a separate transaction okay that is step one step two is that you have to execute this you have to implement this method which method execute method and this is the name you cannot change this name this is how it has to be okay so execute method and you have to just pass this parameter queuable context all right and here of course your logic will go right whatever logic you want to write that like you know that you actually are expecting to run in a, in the background that logic you can include over here all right so this is the basic syntax for queuable apex okay and uh so let's just go ahead and create a queuable class and then i will like you know uh, also show you that show you that like you know how you can call using this syntax how can you how you can call queuable apex and, and how it actually shows you the result all right so i'll just move to my arg so let me just create a and also i want to refresh this all right i just wanted to clear the logs and let's just close this so i'm going to create a class okay as we just discussed okay my queuable demo so what is the step number one? Step number one is that I have to implement that interface, right? Queuable. So implements queuable. What is the second step? Second step is that this interface has a method called execute and I have to implement that method. Otherwise, let's say if I try to save this class, right? It will start giving me an error. See, it is saying that my queuable must implement the method uh execute see it is telling you that this interface has this method and you are not you have not implemented that method over here so what i will do i will just include that method okay so public void execute and then queuable context and all right and that's it And then here you can like you know write your logic for example like anything for example i can also put like you know system.debug and inside execute 
method or i can like you know also i mean anything like for example any kind of updation deletion whatever you have you can write that for example i can write this as well so delete and uh select id from account and five so this statement is going to like you know delete random five records from my org right so this is like you know some some kind of logic that i just want to run inside this execute method okay here i have to limit all right so save All right, now I, I have my, uh, like, you know, QBL Apex class ready, right? I have implemented the interface. I have executed the method. I have also included my logic that I wanted to run in the background. Now the question is still the same that why do we need this, right? Because I can do the same thing in future method, correct? So we'll come to that. But uh, before we actually jump on to that, let's just say that how I, I can actually call this QBL Apex, okay? So let's just go back to the presentation and... Let's see the syntax. So this is how you can actually call your QML Apex class system dot NQ job and then new and then class name. All right. So I am just going to copy the class name here because I would be needing that and I will go to uh, execute anonymous window. So execute anonymous window and here system dot NQ job. Here it is. Right. And then inside this. Uh, new and then class name and then instance okay and that's it so let me execute this okay and if we go and check the logs then what should be inside the log the log should create a separate transaction for this right because that is that is the whole idea of like you know uh, using a synchronous process right so let's just go ahead and check the logs so here it is, see, QABLE handler. So this one is for coming from the developer console, that anonymous window. And this one is actually specifically for this, right? Because the moment Salesforce saw that, that okay, it has QABLE, then it created a separate transaction for this. So whatever debug statement and this one, right, this, this, this execution that I'm trying to do, where should it be available? It should be available under this one, right? So let me just click on this and we can. So I have also put a debug statement so I can check that as well. So see inside execute method okay it has come and i can also check the other thing so there should be a query right the delete query that i have written uh, here it is right select id from account limit five correct uh this is because like you know i have some uh validation rules ignore that but like you know this this actually like you know try to execute that line all right so this is this is how you can like you know create a queable apex and this is how you can call a queable apex all you have to do is system dot nq job and then in brackets new and my NQ. and basically you have to like you know uh, instantiate the class all right so let's just go ahead and check the next thing that we have here so now again like you know now uh, the main point that why do we actually need queable apex right the first benefit of having a queable apex is that it allows the chaining of jobs which is not possible in future methods let's say i have a class and i have three future methods okay then there is no way that i can sequence those, those future methods i cannot sequence okay this future method should run first and then this one and then this one there is no way that i can actually sequence it but if i am using qable apex then i can actually do the sequencing i can do the chaining of jobs okay so that is the benefit number one so let's just go ahead and see that how we can actually do the chaining of jobs in qable apex okay so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to consider this one but i will create a uh, two separate qable apex uh naming it as job one job two and then i will try to uh chain like you know both of them like you know i will try to sequence that job one should run first and then job two should run first okay so let's just go ahead and create two classes so apex class and then qable job one okay so all right okay so again what is the syntax implements uh qable okay and then inside that what do i have to do implement the execute method right public void and then execute all right and then uh qable context 
right and inside this i'm just going to put a system dot debug okay system dot debug inside job one okay or i can just write this is job one this is job one okay and let's just save it now i'm going to create another job cable job two okay so here um cable job two all right and then we are going to do the same thing what is the first step implements cable and then second step is to in uh, second step step two is is to implement the execute method so public void execute and then here cable context okay and here i'm going to write system dot debug uh this is job two and do not get confused i mean you can write any logic here if you want i mean i'm just putting a system dot debug statement but here you can um write anything right let's say delete sorry select id from opportunity where stage is equals to uh post or um yeah closed that's it closed okay this one i hope that i have this pick list value closed so let's let let me just not put this condition because i'm not because stage is a pick list value on opportunity right i'm not sure if the pick list value is exactly as closed it might be closed one or closed lost i believe so that is why i'm just going to ignore this and just put a limit rather okay limit because i don't want to go back to the org and check the stage picklist value for no reason so let's just put it like this and also inside job one we can put another statement delete select id from uh contacts where email is equals to null okay something like this Okay, now I have a uh, cable job one and I also have, what's the issue? Contact, okay. All right, so I have job one and I have job two, okay. Now I want to run job one first and then job two first. I want to make sure that uh, it should not happen that job two ran first and then job one, okay. So let's say, let's say if you are thinking, uh, I mean, let me just go ahead and try to like, you know, uh, run these using the, anonymous window and then i'll tell you what is the problem using the anonymous window okay so let's say i want to run this job first okay so i will this is the syntax correct and then if i want to run another job so this is job two job two so here okay so now if i execute this what do you think you think that job one is going to run first and then this will run actually there is no guarantee this might, I mean, this is totally based on the resource availability. You can never know that which one is going to run fast. One might run fast and then the second one might run, but you never know. Second one might run fast and then this one run can run fast. Sorry, second. So basically there is no order. You cannot like, you know, guarantee the order that in which order these jobs are going to run. So rather there's a solution for it. What you can do is you can chain these jobs inside the like you know these qable uh, apex classes itself so that you can actually make sure of the sequence that what is going to run first and then what will run later on right so for example uh let me just let me just copy this one okay so let's say that i want to make sure that my job one runs first and then i want to run job two so what will i do so at after my logic whatever logic i want to include for job one i will write that logic and once that logic is finished, I'm going to enqueue job number two. This is my job number two, right? Queable job two. Okay. And let me save it. And now what can I do? I can simply go to anonymous window and I can enqueue this one. So what will happen? Because if from the anonymous window, if I enqueue only this one, right? 
job one so what will happen job one will like you know whenever the resources are are available job one will start running and what it will do it will see the execute method and it will like you know run all the logic that you have written and then it will find out this statement and then it is going to enqueue this one and then this 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 particular job will run right so this is how actually you are doing the chaining and you are also making sure that what is the order right which one is going to run first and then which one is going to run later on right so this is this is i think this was pretty easy i hope that you understood what i'm trying to say here and also if you want to like you know enqueue more jobs you can do that as well for example in you can go to your like you know um uh, queueable job too and then you can like you know enqueue another job here so you can like you know enqueue as many as you want and it will run perfectly fine all right so this was the first benefit of queueable apex over future methods that the job chaining is possible uh, in queueable apex but it is not possible in future methods all right now let's just go ahead and check the second uh, benefit you can get the job id so and if you have the job id it will help to monitor the progress so first thing that i'm going to show you is that how you can get the job id and then i will show you that how you can actually monitor the progress using the job id all right so let's just first go ahead and check out that how you can get the job id so uh for example i am going to run job so this is here i am going to run job one okay and here this is actually going to return me a job id okay so i'm going to string job id okay and then here i can simply system dot debug and then job id and this is put something here plus and i will print this okay so this is going to return me the job id and i'm just receiving that job id inside a string and printing that out okay now i'm going to execute this so and one more thing this debug that i have included this debug this job id debug is actually on the anonymous window and it's not on the queueable apex okay not on not on the first one and not on the second one this is on the uh, anonymous window so when i execute this there will be three uh, debug logs that will be generated two queueable debug logs one will be for this one and the other one will be for this one right and there will be third one which will be for this okay and this job id we are going to where are we going to search for this job id in the debug log of this one right anonymous window and not for the other two queueable transactions all right so let's just go ahead and execute this and then we can actually go ahead and check the logs so this is executed let's just go and check the logs so here it is okay so first of all these three are the ones that we have to check these are from the previous i believe so okay so here this one is queueable and you can also check something uh some okay so okay there's one more thing guys so if i i told you right that how the chaining works so i have written queueable i'm executing queueable job one this one and what what i have done inside job one i'm calling job two right i'm calling job two so you can also check that which one got run first okay so job one and job two okay so if you see here so let me show you this okay so 54 and then 53 one of them got like you know was run on 53 and one of them was run on 54 okay so the one that is run on 53 should be job one correct because that is the that is the kind of chaining that we have done that this should run first and then this should run first so if i open the log for 53 then it should show me this debug this is job one if i open the log for 54 because 54 comes after 53 right so this should give me the log of this one job two like you know whatever i have in, inside job two that then i should be able to see that log okay so let's just go ahead and open the log for this one queueable handler 53 okay and then debug here yeah, see this is job one so this is working perfectly fine so this is got exit this got executed first right now if i open the one for 54 it should show me the log from the second job this is job two perfect right now i needed the job id i have printed the job id on the anonymous window and where is the log for this one this is the log for this one okay so if i click on this i should be able to see the job id so debug only and here is the job id now now let's say you have got you you got the job id right 
then what does it mean to monitor the progress if you have the job id you can actually go to the org and you can navigate to uh, apex jobs and find this id and you can actually check the progress so for example i'm just going to copy this job id and i will navigate back to the org let's just go to the uh, apex jobs so here apex jobs click on this and here if i search then i should be so this is actually i think this is 18 digit and let me just remove three here it is this was the job see queuable job one so this is the one that i execute executed right and this is because if you actually go here and so the job id that i printed is for which one this is for job one right job one i have run but job one is also calling job two correct so that is why you can see another like you know uh another another cute job here so job one got executed this is the id that we got and i can see the progress that it is completed and then after that queuable job two got executed because i had called like you know i had enqueued job two inside job one okay so that is how you can actually check the progress all right so now let's just go back to here and see what is the next point so the next point is kubel allows non primitive data types in method parameter example s object which was not allowed in future method so if you guys remember in future methods um uh, if you remember the example that that i had given right that in a future method if you are passing a non primitive data type let's say account so because future method will uh, get executed like you know it will take a little longer time to get executed so what happens in that case that if let's say there is uh, any kind of change that has happened on the s object that you have passed on the parameter right let's say if you have if if you have passed a non primitive data type right for example account and meanwhile if there is something there is some change on that account that has happened then the data that you actually your future method was considering was different and the change that actually happened on the account is the most up updated one right so that kind of creates data inconsistency and then also like you know the result of the future method will not be valid anymore correct so that is the reason that was the reason that future method doesn't allow a non primitive data type but in queuable you can actually pass primitive data types and let's just see that how you can actually pass primitive data type okay so um sorry how you can pass non primitive data type so i will go back here and i'm going to tell you a scenario that what i'm going to do okay so let me just close this okay so um let me just write a scenario and then so or i can show you from the org so what i want to do actually is let me go to account sorry I'm telling you the requirement, and then we are going to implement that requirement uh, with the help of Kubel Apex, and we will use that third point that we saw. We are when we will write Kubel Apex in the method, we are going to pass non-primitive data type that is S object record. Okay, so that you will have a better understanding of this one. So the requirement is, let's say if I create any account, okay, let's say when I'm creating this account. so the moment i am i create any account one contact should be automatically created and the contacts last name should be like you know equals to accounts first name like accounts name so basically like you know that auto generated contact that will be like you know creating with the help of like you know kubel uh, apex that contact should have contacts name should be equals to accounts name that is one thing the second thing is that that contact should also be attached to to that account wherever like you know like whatever account i am creating so for example let's say let me just show you quickly so if i create an account let's say test now and then uh, this is fine so the moment i save this right one contact should automatically get created and should be attached on this contact itself sorry on this account itself and that contact's name should be test now okay so if i save this okay this one and if i see the contact see contact is zero but after i actually implement this requirement then it should create 
it should auto create a, a contact and that contact's name should be equals to the account's name all right so that is the requirement now the approach is going to be something like this okay so so whenever you are creating anything right you are creating or updating anything uh you can write a trigger right so on account i can write a trigger and every time any uh, account is getting created i can that trigger will be holding that record right whatever is getting created trigger dot new right because trigger dot new is something that actually holds the instance for anything that is like you know um, um if you are using like for example if you are using after insert or after update so after insert if you are using after insert in after insert context in your trigger and if you are inserting an account then whatever account you will insert that after insert context it is going to have the that trigger dot new if you use trigger dot new then that will have the account id and every other detail related to that account correct that is how you can actually fetch all the details right so basically what in short what we are going to do is that from trigger we are going to call our uh, qbl apex class okay because from trigger i can pass the account id okay the list of account or like you know the account that is getting created i can pass that account to my um uh, qbl apex right and once i have that account in my qbl apex so in qbl apex i would be writing a method right because the trigger has already given me the account now where would where will i be using this account i am going to receive this account in a method in my qbl apex class i will be writing a, writing a method in my um not a method basically a constructor because constructor is something that is uh, that that is called first right so in my apex trigger i am going to call my qbl apex and once i call my qbl apex when like you know the uh, uh, compiler reaches the qbl apex right i'm not sure if i'm using the right word for like you know compiler or engine but when the compiler goes to your qbl apex the first thing like you know what it is going to do is it is going to check the constructor because that is where you have passed the value from your trigger to qbl apex right so in the constructor you will receive that account okay now you have the account value in the constructor okay then in your qbl apex the execute method that you would you would write right in that execute method you can actually run a loop over to that account and create a contact and assign the accounts first name to the contact name and then accounts id to the contacts account id so don't worry if you did not understand but just keep the steps in mind that from trigger you will get the account okay and then from the trigger itself you are going to call the qbl apex okay and how will you call the qbl apex when you actually call the qbl apex you will you actually instantiate the instantiate with the class name right that is nothing but the constructor and you will pass that account value inside that constructor using trigger dot new and once you have that and once your compiler reaches to your qbl apex it will like you know try to find that constructor that parameterized constructor and it will provide you the account value once you have the account value in the list you can like you know store that into another list and then pass that list to your execute method run a loop create a contact and insert the contact and that's it okay so let's just go ahead and do it so uh, i am first of all i'm going to create a qable uh, okay create contact qable class okay so because um let's just like you know finish the structure and then we can start so what are the things that we need to do implements uh qable okay this is the first thing the second thing is implement the execute method so public void execute and then q sorry qable context and uh, okay here and then this okay now i was saying that i want to create a constructor okay so constructor and what i am expecting inside this constructor account record right list of account list of account this was something that you could you cannot you uh, you were not allowed to do in the future method right because this is a non primitive data type this is like you know s object that i'm passing list of s object but in future method it was not allowed you can either pass string boolean like you know integer 
or like you know a list of ids or like you know anything like that but nothing which actually is like you know a non primitive for example like you know s objects you could have not done that in future method but this is queuable and i'm doing it okay so list of account and you can say list account from just for your understanding trigger because this value you are going to receive from the trigger so that is why i'm naming it like this okay so let's just no okay let me and uh, actually i didn't let me save it okay i will finish this class but first of all i just want to go and create a uh, i want to check like you know if there is a trigger on account if not then i'm going to create one so object account triggers so i do have account trigger i think i have created a handler so let me just go to the handler all right or i can simply include the logic in this it's not a problem for now um so file new sorry not new i just want to open that so account trigger and uh, i have a lot of things here but i'm going to Oh, that's okay i'm just let me just like you know add it in the last or just for your convenience i'm going to do if trigger dot is insert and trigger dot trigger dot is after so just to explain you this so is insert because if you remember the requirement that i just told right that i want the auto creation of contact when the account is inserted right that is why i have include if trigger dot is insert right if it is like you know insert insert of like you know activity or operation whatever you call it and then it, after like you know trigger dot after is after why i have included is after because i need the account id right i need the account the whole account record right because i want to pass that to kubel apex and when will i actually get the account id and like you know and its values after the account is inserted correct so that is why is after because i need the id so is after and what i want to do after this i want to call the queuable apex class right so you can copy this because constructor name is equals to the class name so you can copy anything you want here and then sorry this not not like this you need to uh, do the system dot nq right system dot nq job okay and then here new and then what is your constructor name this is a constructor name copy it here or you can say class name right this is also class name now inside here what 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 is your constructor expecting here your constructor is expecting here list of account so and how, where will you get the list of account from from trigger dot new i if you have not like you know watched if you don't have idea on triggers i am sure that you will not understand this that why i am using trigger dot is insert why i am using trigger dot is after what is the significance of trigger dot new but for now what i can tell you that these are just the checks that like you know i can remove these checks but i just want to put more checks because these are the two conditions that i am concerned about or like you know this is this is something which is actually significant to my requ requirement over here that is why i am including this condition and trigger dot new something like you know that actually holds the instance of like you know if you are using update then it is going to hold the like you know uh, it will have that uh, list of record like you know which is getting updated it will have the instance of those records and if you are like you know basically inserting anything then it will hold the like you know instance instance of the inserted record okay so that is so basically trigger dot new always returns like you know a list of the like you know uh, object records so but if you're not getting it i am in mean, please you should like you know uh, check out the trigger sessions first or like you know read about trigger get more comfortable and then switch to this topic all right so all right so this is my trigger i have the i will get the account record and i am like you know uh, enqueuing this like you know uh, queuable apex and in the constructor i am passing the trigger dot new which is nothing but the account record okay so i will get the account record here now what so i want to keep that list of account record into some other list okay so i am going to create another list and here account uh, list 
ACC for contact, like anything which makes more sense to you. Okay. And then here I am going to store this dot this is it sorry is equals to I'm going to this is the list of account that I have received right from the trigger. So this okay. I have this. Now, now this is my execute method. And what was the actual requirement? That once you have the account, I wanted to create auto create a contact, right? And I wanted to assign the uh, account name to the contact name and also account ID to the account ID field of the contact, right? So what I want to do inside execute. First of all, I want to run this loop on account of like list of account, whatever I have received. What is the list of account? This is the list of account, right? So this and then what I want to do, I want to create a contact. So new contact and here, sorry, I want to, so on contact object, last name is required. First name is not required. Okay, so I'm going to keep last name as the accounts. I mean, I can just put the account name to the contacts last name. And then also there's a field on contact called account ID. Okay, so if I want to associate this account to that auto generated contact, then I have to assign the account ID as well, ACC dot ID. Okay. And that's it. So now inside the loop, I'm never like, you know, you're never supposed to actually make any kind of DML operations inside the loop. So I'm going to create a list. I will add this contact to that list. And then like, you know, coming out of the loop, I'm going to insert that list. Okay. So list of contact. Okay. LST con to be created. Okay, so this new list contact. All right, so here I can just add this to add. And what do you have to add? You have to add CON. Okay, this is where you have the record. So this and then copy this. And here, insert, and that's it. Okay. So this was something that you could not, you could have not achieved in future method because um, this this particular path, like because we are getting uh, getting the account record from the trigger, and that is how we are like you know actually using it over here, and then we are passing that to the execute method. And then based on the like, you know, result that we have gotten here, we are like, you know, running a loop and like, you know, creating the contact. That's it. So I have saved this and we should be okay. This was the, okay. So we can go to the steps again uh, on account trigger. I have like, you know, NQ this um, QL Apex and I'm passing the account record from here. Okay. So every time like, you know, a new account is created, then it will have that like, you know, new instance of the account and then here it is going to pass that new instance of the account and I have that list of account. I am running a loop on the account in the execute method and creating that contact. All right. And that's it. So let's just go to the org and create an account and see if the contact is getting created or not. Okay. So new account. Check contact creation. So a contact should be created with this name. Okay. That's the whole idea. So all right let me refresh this and see all right so the contact is not getting created Actually, the account trigger is inactive, so we need to activate this. This is the trigger that I made changes on, right? That was inactive, so I need to activate this. Otherwise, that is the reason that it was not getting triggered. So I'll go back to the account, and I'm going to create one. Test. Curable. And save this. All right. Let's just go ahead and check. I think I have the logs. 
Mm -hmm. I remove that. Okay, all right, here it is. So, null pointer exception 14 this dot account id all right that was just the record type that i had provided but that's not required i believe so account new All right. Okay. So I created an account. The account record was passed to the, uh, by like, you know, enqueuing, uh, the, uh, uh, like, you know, queuable class and the account record was passed in the constructor. And when the constructor received it, we stored that in a list. If I go back here, all we have done is let me open the account trigger. Okay. So open trigger. account trigger okay so here in account trigger whenever the record is getting inserted we are enqueuing this uh, queuable apex and we are passing the account record okay this is nothing but this will have the uh, list of accounts and once we come here in this constructor we are receiving the list of account from the trigger we are storing that into another list and then we are looping over that list and creating a contact. And when we are creating the contact, this is the cre uh, contact creation statement, okay? And here I am assigning the last name of contact with the account's name and then con account ID on the contact with the account ID, which we have received here, okay? That is how this contact is going to be associated on the account that was just created, all right? And then I have kept, kept this contact inside another list because I cannot insert like, you know, I should not be inserting it inside the loop. That is, I have added this to a list and coming out of the loop, loop I have inserted this list. Okay. So this is how you can actually, um, this, this was the third point, right? Where you can actually pass the non-primitive data type. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and check what else do we have. So, all right. So the conclusion is that QABLE logic has to be in a class, right? Because in future method, we are like, you know, actually defining a method and then annotating it with like, you know, at the rate future, all right? And then uh, it allows chaining of jobs. We saw that like, you know, job one, job two, and like inside job one, after the logic, we can like, you know, NQ job two. And in that sequence, it is the, it, it will be processed, all right? And then provides job ID. So whatever that NQ statement, system dot uh, NQ job, and then new and class name, right? So that basically actually returns you job ID. So you can store that job ID into some string and then you can like, you know, debug, print that. And then you can search for that job ID into your Apex job in order to check if your job has been completed or not. Or you can simply identify your job has been completed or not just by seeing the class name that actually shows on the Apex jobs screen. All right. And then allows non-primitive data type that we just saw. Then Qubel limitation. So Qubel cannot handle millions of records processing in a single job. Okay. That is something only batch Apex can do. Okay. So in the next video, we are going to see that what batch Apex is and how we can like, you know, we'll take a scenario and how, and, and we'll see that how we can actually implement that. All right. So I'll see you in the next session till then. Bye-bye.